Let's talk about the Minsky cycle for a second so that we can understand where we're at in the general um, sentiment of the market. So let's not use the word sentiment because that belongs to investors. Let's step back from our positions as investors and look at the market as a whole. Now one way people describe a market crash is via a Minsky cycle and almost all market crashes occur in basically the same way. So we can ignore the hedge finance portion for the moment and just look at when the credit begins to leave the GDP. So at a certain point when people are bullish on the market, when they begin to be bullish on the market, um, they will dig into credit and they will take out loans to invest. Now that's natural and that happens all the time. For example, real estate requires credit. Um, the last market crash was a real estate market crash and at the beginning when people were taking out mortgages for their homes it wasn't a problem. Those were specul A lot of them were speculative investments so people would go to let's say Las Vegas and buy a home because they believe that that house is going to pay off in the future. They might not have lived there but they bought it because they thought it would be a good investment. That's speculative finance. Now this is not just something investors do, it's something banks do as well, and big institutions and hedge funds and so on. Um, what's important to know is that speculative finance often pays off. And when it pays off, more people learn about the speculative finance. And when times are good, the odd thing is, people's risk um, appetite tends to change. So that applies to people as well as to institutions. Once you get to a certain point, in your investments and you're seeing you're making money, you invest more and more and you take out more and more credit and you'll see that this line and the GDP line start to diverge greatly. After a while what happens is called Ponzi finance. That's when it's like a Ponzi scheme in that um, when people get in late they're not going to be making money but they're seeing all the other people who got in early make money and they're doing the same things. But at this point in the cycle it's unsustainable. So what happens is, for example, um, the subprime mortgage crisis last 2008 was an example of Ponzi financing. Um, they, the banks were taking more and more risks because things were looking better and better. So they would start to give out loans to people who really couldn't repay those loans because those subprime mortgage um, in investments were actually paying off quite well. They were easy to sell and people were getting rich banks were getting rich by selling those um, bundled investments. Um, so what we're seeing now, I want to bring this back, I don't want to talk about the 2008 crash, um, let's bring this back to where we are now. Obviously the real estate market is a bit better than it used to be. Um, I wrote an article on this, uh, you can see it on Seeking Alpha, but if you look at the graphs, we're basically where we were before 2008 in real estate and we're at a sustainable level. Canada on the other hand is not. Canada is looking like um, the US in 2008 but here's the point. I don't want to just stay on this graphic for too long. Um, eventually we're going to get out of this this closeness between the credit line and the GDP line and we get to what's called the Minsky moment. And when you get to the Minsky moment what happens is all of that Ponzi finance money um, isn't making much money anymore. So the investments that used to pay off aren't paying off anymore. Now when that happens, people stop investing. Um, the market starts to stabilize. It gets kind of flat. And um, the people who were investing start to sell their investments. And the lenders start to call in their loans. Now if you call in a loan and let's say you, you bought stock and you used borrowed money from me to buy that stock. And now I'm saying, hey, um, you borrowed money from me. I gave you an interest rate. I want the money back plus the interest rate back. But your investments haven't paid off yet. So you sell the investments, perhaps at a loss, perhaps breaking even, but you also have to pay me the interest. So you sell something else that's worth money. That could be your home. Um, it could be bonds. But the point here is that it's not just one market that crashes at the Minsky moment. Maybe stock starts to fall, but bonds will fall as well, and the real estate market will fall as well because people need to pay off those loans, and they can't pay it off 
from stock alone. That's the Minsky moment, and that's when everything turns to shit. That's when the stock market begins to crash, and many other markets begin to crash. Um, but it depends on what market crash we're looking at to determine what's the catalyst. Now, in the U.S., in the U.S., the catalyst is going to be, I believe, it's going to be a debt crisis. Um, last time it was a real estate crisis, and the time before that it was a dot-com crisis. But this time we're going to have a debt crisis. All you need to do is look at the total debt we have versus GDP. Uh, this has certainly gotten out of hand, and in 2008 it was corrected slightly, but the problem in 2008 wasn't debt, it was more related to real estate. Um, this is just pure debt. Let's take a look at where we are in the market right now. All right, so we're seeing a very long bull cycle that started in 2009, and we went pretty much straight up till where we're at now, and we've floated pretty much sideways, just like what you'd expect at a Minsky moment. Now that we're floating sideways, we're looking to perhaps fall downward, just like this graph would predict, and well, we're going to see something probably like this. Now, before this happened in 2008, we were having a very long bull market, as you can see. And in 2008, we had that same kind of evenness. We hit a top, and there's a little bit of selling. You see the black or the red candlesticks? A little bit of selling, and then bounce back up, Fibonacci bounce. Then a lot of selling, a little bounce. Then a lot more selling until we hit the bottom and things were resolved, the banks were bailed out, and then we headed back up again. So the stock market really always does go up, at least in history. It's not something you need to concern yourself for a long time, but it's something you should concern yourself with for now because it looks like we're pretty much at that same level um, as 2008. Now if you remember there's also a crisis in late 99, 2000, early 2000s, where the dot-com bubble burst, and that was also a Minsky moment. That was when people were putting money into speculative um, stocks, and they were borrowing money to do so. And eventually, people realized that all these stocks were trading at way overvalued prices, and many of them were not even making profit. And eventually, people started to sell, and the other people who were called in on their debts um, had to sell other things such as bonds and the market and the economy crashed. Now both of these crashes, crashes brought us to the same place and before 2008 we climbed back to where we were at 2000 and then crashed again. Now this time's a bit different. We're way above where we were at the peaks of the last two crashes but one thing that the theory of the Minsky cycle um, points out is that the longer it takes for this for this credit to uh, correct itself, the more severe the crash is going to be. Now that could just mean that it's a severe crash that brings us down to the lows of before, but it also could mean that we're, we're going to be brought down to even lower lows. Now another way of looking at this is since we're at an all-time high, the crash might go to perhaps the high of 2008 or the high of 2000. That's a possibility as well. We really don't know. We don't know. We, we could obviously estimate it, but there are so many factors involved in um, this debt crisis that we can't really put them all into an equation and determine what's uh, the end price of the S&P. So yeah, this is what you're looking at, by the way, the S&P 500 index. Um, so, I mean, you can... You can kind of estimate where you want it to fall, but it's not going to be a very good or useful estimate in either case. What you should be doing instead is hedging, and if you don't know what hedging is, uh, I have other videos on that subject, but the point is, let's say you're still bullish on the economy, because after one year we've trended sideways, and it looks kind of like we're heading back up, I don't think so, but it looks like it. So if you want to buy some bullish investments, do so but also hedge. And you can hedge by, for example, buying inverse ETFs, um, selling covered calls, you can buy puts. I have many videos on these subjects, so dig into those. I just want people to know where we are in the market and realize that our debt is really getting out of hand. Um, yeah, I mean, what else can I say? 
and um, what happened? What were we talking about? Uh, we saw a big bounce a couple of days ago. Oh, I want this to be evergreen content, so I'm not going to talk about it a couple of days ago. So I'm going to finish this video now. Um, please subscribe and like this video, and in the comment section below, give me an idea of what you want me to make a video on next, and I will do so. I already have a long list of requests, but I will make sure that I get to pretty much every request that is um, doable.